Hey there, Arnav here from Coding Blocks, and I'm once again here to talk about shares, equity, ESOPs, RSUs, and all of that stuff. So, a couple of days back, I made that video about uh, you know your uh, salary packages and negotiation and all of that, and uh, I got like pretty phenomenal response from that. Uh, I think view wise, it's been just three days and it has some 4,000 views or something, but not view wise. I got messages on my um, you know Facebook Messenger, on LinkedIn, on even on Instagram. Uh, everybody saying that uh, they want uh, to hear uh, a little more about uh, these things. They want to understand these things. Uh, especially, I got a lot of messages from people who are just about to join. So a lot of them have got their joining dates also delayed because of COVID, and some of them have a couple of options, and they are trying to figure out which one they should go for. And uh, everybody had uh, this one thing in mind, which was. Um, can uh, there be a better explanation of how the ESOPs work, how RSUs work, uh, how, what's the vesting schedule, what does that mean, uh, right? And like, you know, in general, like, let's talk about equity. So that's what we'll do in this video. Uh, we are going to be talking about all of these things, right? So uh, the, the first thing that we need to understand to understand this entire concept is how shares work, okay? And while this is something uh, I think a lot of you guys know, but uh, just to give you a basic primer, so say uh, there are a couple of uh, people, uh, maybe there are like three people, A, B, and C, and they open a startup, okay? And say uh, there is A, and uh, let me just use a couple of different colors. So there is uh, B, and uh, you know, um, there is C, okay? So uh, these three people, they open a startup. And let's just say that, you know, when, when you're opening a startup, uh, it might be that, you know, A, B, and C are contributing equally to that startup, in which case they might uh, decide between themselves that they will have equal amount of shares. But they might decide not to have equal amount of shares. It might be that A has more shares than B has. So, for example, Larry Page and Sergey Brin at Google, when they started, they had equal uh, number of shares. But, uh, you know, if you look at somebody like, say, uh, uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak of Apple, uh, they did not have equal number of uh, shares when they started out Apple. So it depends on like uh, the, the understanding between the people who, who started off. And uh, l l let's just say that, you know, uh, C has got um, these uh, many shares, which is um, uh, like these six shares that uh, C has. Okay. And uh, B has, uh, you know, um, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So B has like you know uh, fourteen shares, okay. And uh, so C had um, six shares, and uh, A um, has let's just say you know twelve shares, okay. So that's how uh, the distribution inside uh, the company is uh, in the beginning. Which means uh, that uh, the company has uh, like a total of uh, 32 uh, shares and that's that's what the total shares that the company has and uh, which means that A has around you know 38% uh, in the company and uh, C has around 18% uh, in the company and uh, B has around 47% of equity in this company. So uh, these three people A, B and C they start running this company and they have this kind of a share distribution. Uh, what happens is say uh, you know uh, at some later date uh, there is a new guy that joins maybe six months later um, and you know the company is like just uh, getting started so they don't really have a lot of money to pay that guy so they say that you know okay uh, now that you have joined we will give you four shares okay that's how uh, a new person is given equity so when a new person comes, they are given fresh shares, okay? So the shares, the 12 and the 14 and the six that A, B and C had, uh, that's gonna be remaining the same, okay? Uh, so it's not like A will give one of his shares to D. I mean, that's also possible to be done, but then that share has to be sold. Uh, instead of doing that, when a new investor comes or a new co-founder comes to the company, you just uh, allocate new shares to that person. So now uh, this company has, uh, has got like a total of, um, 36 uh, shares right and uh, the percentages here would also of course uh, change a bit so um, the percentages here would not be 18 47 and 38 percent anymore so the percentages are gonna look uh, more like you know uh, 33 percent for a um, that's one third of the company actually 
B having uh, around 38% and uh, C having 16% and uh, D having uh, like 11%. Uh, I think some would not uh, uh, be, I mean, I just rounded off these figures, okay. So that's the kind of percentages these people have. Now what happened here is like, uh, you know, uh, the, the percentage of uh, B which was at 47, which became 38 here. Uh, this process is uh, called uh, dilution, okay. So whenever somebody new uh, comes into uh, this distribution is called the cap table okay so the cap table is uh, basically the short form for capitalization table so who has how many shares is the cap table and when new people are added into the cap table uh, the existing people their percentage is dilute although the existing shares that they have remain the same so that's basically how uh, shares work okay uh, once you understand this, then it becomes easy to understand the concept of uh, ESOPs and RSUs and everything that follows after that. Before we go any further, let's have a little clarification on these three terms, that's uh, equity, shares and stock. Now, um, shares and stock are kind of interchangeable terms. So when somebody talks about shares and somebody talks about stocks, they're basically talking about the same thing. Um, equity also means the same thing but the way we measure is a little different so generally when we're talking about equity we uh, speak in terms of percentages and uh, when we uh, speak in terms of shares or stock we generally say in terms of absolute numbers so if say for example a company has uh, you know uh, 2000 uh, shares total okay and uh, you have got uh, you know 30 shares inside that so you can generally say that you know i have 30 shares in the company or i have 30 stocks in the company uh, or the other way that you can say is that i own 1.5 percent equity in that company okay so it's kind of the same thing uh, so uh, if, if further in this video as we talk more about say uh, you know uh, rsu where i talk about restricted stock units so one stock unit is generally one share Okay, uh, when I talk about uh, something like employee stock option plan, there are also uh, stocks are like one shares. That's what I'm talking about. And anywhere I use the word equity, uh, generally I'd be using it in terms of percentages. So, uh, you know, let's have that clear in our minds before we go ahead. So we discussed about, you know, the number of shares and the percentages. But uh, to start making sense in terms of monetary value, which is, I think, what you're interested in and what you've come to the video for is, you know, how much is my equity worth? Uh, so you actually assign a dollar or a rupee value to the concept of uh, shares and equity. We need to understand the concept of valuations. So how does valuation happen? Now, let's say uh, these three people, A, B and, uh, uh, you know, uh, C have uh, started this company. Uh, okay. So um c right so c so uh if these three people have started uh, a company and uh, a has got 18 shares in it and b has got eight shares in it and c has got four shares in it now at this point they might be you know running this company and they might have some employees and they might be having some revenue maybe they're making like you know one lakh rupees a month and they might be spending ninety thousand rupees a month to get that one lakh rupees so they have like their profit and their loss they're making a ten thousand rupees profit but what's the value of the company now uh, there are two ways of looking at it uh, what a b and c themselves can decide that the value of our company is uh, you know say one crore rupees it's up to them and anybody like c says that if if anybody wants to buy one uh, share from me i have got four shares so if anybody wants to buy one share from me he had to pay you know uh one uh by 30th of so there's total number of shares in this company is 30 18 plus 8 uh, plus uh, 4. so uh c says that you know if you pay one by 30 of one crores uh then you can buy one share so that would put the valuation of this company at one uh, crore rupees now in real terms when does the valuation get set so generally uh, in in terms of startups in in the kind of startups that uh, you are kind of looking at the ones which give esops uh, they generally have funding rounds so venture capitalists are going to be funding uh, these startups because they think that uh, you know in the future these uh, companies are going to be making a lot of money so they want to invest money right now so that they can make money out of it later now say some 
guy uh, you know comes and uh, he, he, he is v so v is venture capitalist he says that you know i uh, would like you to issue uh, you know these many uh, shares of your company which is uh, you know uh, nine shares of your company and uh, please issue that to me for uh, you know say one uh, crore rupees okay so in that case that's the point from where our valuation starts to happen okay so if uh, the value of nine uh, shares is one crore, or, or let's say just to make it a little easier for you guys so let's say uh, it, they buy it for 90 lakhs okay they buy it for 90 lakh rupees okay uh, so if they buy it for 90 lakh rupees that means that you know one share of this company is now worth 10 lakh rupees so if one share is worth 10 lakh uh, then in that case you know uh, 39 uh, shares uh, of this company which is like the total number of shares this company now has so uh, 39 shares are gonna be basically you know uh, worth uh, 3.9 crore rupees so that's the valuation of the company now this is called the uh, post in uh, post uh, money valuation or the post funding valuation so now uh, uh, you know this uh, venture capitalist v they have invested 90 lakhs into this company making the value of this company 3.9 crores okay and which means automatically that a is uh, an owner of 1.8 crore uh, imaginary rupees okay now a does not have 1.8 crore rupees in their pocket uh, right now for example i do have say equity in uh, coding blocks uh, that equity as long as i don't sell them i don't really have it in my pocket it's uh, paper money right so that that's how it happens with startup founders so even b has got uh, you know 80 lakh rupees and c has got 40 lakh rupees and a has got 1.8 crore rupees and that's all imaginary money if this company gets sold at some point of time then they can make that money uh, but right now this 90 lakh rupees is going to be getting used in the company as uh, you know as as a as an investment that they can use to you know uh, in marketing or whatever they can use to pay salaries of people uh, this money does not get into a b or c's pocket but this makes the value of the company at 3.9 crore okay, okay uh, so in this example let's uh, change the numbers a little bit let's just think that each box is uh, worth uh, 10 lakh uh, 10, 10 uh, shares instead of uh, one share so which means a actually has got 180 uh, shares and b has got uh, you know 80 uh, shares and c has got 40 shares and the venture capitalist has actually bought 90 shares for 90 uh, lakhs so which means that you know um, one uh, 10 shares are worth 10 lakh which means like each share is worth uh, 1 lakh rupees okay the the evaluation of the company would still be the same in that case the entire valuation of the company is uh, you know 3.9 uh, cr at this stage okay now what happens is that uh, you know if uh, we want to start giving some uh, equity to um, the early stage employees that the people who join the company in the early days we 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 say are not able to pay them a lot of money in terms of cash like if they were joining a company like uh, google or uh, amazon or microsoft they might be getting a lot of money in salary but uh, we are just saying that you know it's an early stage company you're joining us you will grow with the company so we're not going to be able to pay you a lot of uh, money in salary but we're going to be giving you a good amount of equity okay so how will that play out uh, so we create something called the esop pool um, so what's the esop pool look like is uh, say i allocate this amount of uh, you know shares which is uh, 30 of them right so i say that i have uh, an esop pool of uh, 30 shares okay now uh, that means like the a couple of things are going to change here when i do this uh, this esop pool does not belong to anybody uh, right now it does not belong to a b c or the investor in my company it does not belong to anybody it belongs to the company itself now the number of shares in my company are now uh, they were earlier uh, you know uh, 
uh 40 i think uh what's it become it was uh 39 earlier right uh so it's 42 now right so uh, uh so now my company has got 420 uh shares and the worth of the company does not change when you create an esop pool okay so this is an interesting part that you need to keep in mind so my uh company is worth uh, 3.9 cr because as long as uh, you know there is not another round of funding uh, you know the valuation of the company is not going to change so now 420 uh, shares are worth 3.9 cr which means that uh, each uh, share is now not worth uh, 1 lakh rupee but uh, each share is actually worth uh, like around 93000 uh, rupees okay the value has uh, reduced a little bit now if each share is uh, worth 93000 rupees uh, which means you know uh, so the value of a's uh, equity which was earlier you know 1.8 cr okay so that's not actually 1.8 cr now anymore uh, it would be uh, you know 1.67 uh, uh, cr and everybody's would have changed like b's uh, worth is not uh, you know anymore uh, uh, you know 80 uh, 8 crores or c's worth is not uh, sorry 80 lakhs and c is not worth 40 lakhs anymore all of those would have reduced a little bit but now we have this esop pool okay so what's the worth of this esop pool so my esop pool is now uh, going to be worth uh, you know 93000 into uh, 30 uh, which uh, is gonna be 2 point uh, you know uh, sorry uh, 27 lakhs worth so I've got 27 lakhs worth uh, of shares that I can distribute to my employees right now okay uh, how will this uh, distribution work so uh, here's how we make use of that uh, 30 uh, lakhs piece of pool that we have here okay uh we could just say that's employee equity pool or whatever i mean this is just 30 spare shares that we have okay now say we have got two people who join the company e2 uh, and e1 now let's just say employee one is uh somebody who is joined at a you know kind of a juniorish post like as a say uh entry level developer and e2 is somebody who is like the marketing head or the marketing manager who has joined so it's like a senior kind of a post uh and we say that you know uh to e1 we give uh four uh of these uh pairs and to e2 we give eight of these okay that would still make 12 of them which means uh, like 18 of them are still left and it can mean that you know later on when even more employees keep coming like you know uh, e3 and e4 and all they keep coming so they would uh accordingly keep getting uh more and more equity uh, like that okay now uh this means that you know when uh employee one is told about his offer letter uh we can actually tell employee one that you know your uh salary maybe it's say you know 10 lakhs per annum or something like that that's your salary and along with that you have got uh you know this uh four into uh ninety three thousand, which is uh basically 3.7 lakhs uh worth of uh ESOPs okay or equity uh, it depends like will I disburse the uh, amount as RSUs or as equity or will I disburse the amount as ESOPs we're going to be discussing that right uh, after this but I can tell like in their package that you know it's like uh, 10 lakhs is your uh, cash component of your salary and 3.7 lakhs you've got uh, your ESOPs and similarly with uh, the other person out there you know it would be like 7.4 lakhs uh, ESOPs for the uh the second employee we can say that you know you're getting 7.4 lakh um, equity or esops here okay now uh this disbursement model like uh, whether they get it as equity or esops uh that's uh that's where the next part of the game is okay so let's go and understand how the dispersion of esops uh, happen okay always remember though that uh, you know no company has more than 100 percent equity like the sum of the all these shares is 100 percent okay so whenever this ESOP pool kind of thing is created, this 30 uh, shares which we want to give to the employees has been created. Uh, the founders like A, B, and C, and the you know initial investor V, they 
basically take a cut on their percentage uh, they, they dilute some of their percentage so the number of shares that they own remains same but the denominator increases by uh, 30 so uh, the percentage of the company that a was owning that gets uh, reduced a bit and as a result like the total valuation of the company 3.9 but their ownership is like 1.67 instead of 1.8 now so everybody takes a little bit of cut for the employees to be able to get this amount of money now uh, what happens is that you know uh, there is a concept of vesting so this is a very important thing uh, to understand and that's uh, vesting so vesting is something uh, that's uh, pretty important because you know if uh, the day uh, employee uh, say I will take the example of employee 2 who has got eight equities uh, talk about that now the day that this this new marketing head joins if I actually give him uh, all of his eight uh, shares like uh, to him uh, then you know one month later that person can just leave the company and uh, you know these founders they might have worked in this company for two years and after working in this company for two years they have uh, these number of uh, shares but uh, employee number two he just you know joins the company and he leaves in two months and he has got eight shares of the company of course that's not a good model so what uh, people do is they use something called vesting okay now how does vesting work is uh, that uh, the the entire amount uh, seven uh, the eight shares you know employee two is not gonna have all of them on day one what uh, a common uh, kind of vesting model that a lot of times companies use is called the you know um, either they call it the you know uh, cliff and equal kind of uh, vesting model so what's the cliff and equal kind of vesting model means that you know there is a uh, there's a cliff okay so what's the cliff is uh, kind of let's just say the number of shares that the company uh, is uh, having and they are holding it uh, for you so you know uh, So let's just say uh, uh, this is eight okay, and this is zero so uh, you start here the company has got all the eight shares and as they keep giving it to you uh, it, the numbers that the company has reduces and the ones that you have increases so what happens is like after uh, uh, you know uh, one year so let's just say these are six month blocks okay so after one year uh, till one year you the person gets zero uh, as a zero equity from the company after one year uh, we give that person uh, say you know uh, uh, two of their uh, shares uh, okay then after another year we give them two more of their shares and then uh, after another we give them two more of their shares and then after another year we give them two more of their shares and finally here we go so after spending you know uh, one year you get uh, two of your uh, shares after spending uh, two years you get four after spending three years you get six and after spending four years you finally get all eight uh, equities now this part is called the cliff so before you reach the cliff you don't get any equity at all okay so this is called this multi cliff four year model uh, what uh, some companies can do is they can use a different model that is uh, they might be uh, you know doing like after the first year they might do it a little more gradually so say this is after the first year right uh, so after the first year they don't give you uh, two uh, equities immediately what they will do is after the first year it's kind of like this okay so you would still get uh, your entire you know uh, eight uh, uh you know uh, a uh, your eight shares at the end of four years but uh, say uh, at the end of uh, 1.5 years uh, you know at this point you would have gotten a little more because during this time also uh, the shares was increasing uh, so the vesting can happen at uh, monthly period or at a quarterly period or at a yearly period so if it's a yearly period you are getting uh, two shares each after every year if it's uh, you know a monthly uh, if it's a half yearly period then you get uh, one share each after every six months okay so the cliff is the point from where your vesting starts now if you leave the company before you reach the cliff your cliff could be at one year your cliff could be at six months it depends on your contract generally it's one year so if you leave the company before you reach the cliff 
you would actually walk away with zero equity. You would not have a single one of those shares. Okay. Um, uh, so sometimes uh, the model also is a little uh, different. So the kind of uh, vesting that I had with my Zomato shares, they looked a little bit like this. They looked like I went to, I go up to a cliff. And then after that, it starts reducing in small steps. And then finally, as yes, big steps. So like, uh, if I leave the company at this point, I have zero. But if I leave the company at this point, then I have say maybe uh, just uh, say uh, one uh, equity. If I leave another year later, I have two equity. If I leave another year later, I have like six of them. So it's like that, like the longer I stay, uh, the more amount of equities I get uh, every, uh, the shares I get every year, okay. So different kind of vesting models can exist. It could be like equal vesting every six months, or it could be like, you know, uh, the first year you get only one uh, share, the second year you get two, the third year you get three, like that. So different kind of vesting models can exist. Uh, sometimes what happens is like you have been promised uh, eight shares. But uh, at the end of the first year, uh, only 10% uh, is supposed to vest. If only 10% is supposed to vest, it means after, you know, one year, uh, you are supposed to get 0 0.8 shares. Now, 0 0.8 shares can't be actually given to a person, okay? Uh, you can only be given whole shares. So in that case, if I actually leave at, say, one year uh, plus, you know, 360 days, uh, at that point also I will have you know zero equity because you know maybe the next cliff is at two years okay so unless I stay two years I don't get even the 0 0.8 because you can't be given 0 0.8 okay a lot of times companies uh, have like uh, shares which are big in value like one lakh two lakh kind of values and like uh, the end of your first year your amount might actually be a fraction of a share rather than a full share and if it's fraction of a share then you will actually Still have zero uh, shares at the end of first year so that's a that's a very possible case and that happens in a lot of companies so you might want to uh, take a look at that as well like if you have uh, you know not a whole number vested by the end of first year it means that your cliff is actually at two years it's not at uh, one year okay so uh, take care of that as uh, well okay okay uh, so the next thing to understand in this game is uh, shares versus options okay so uh, when companies say that, you know, they're going to be paying you uh, in equity or, uh, you know, RSUs, so that means they're talking about shares. And when uh, the word is ETOPS, that's something that uh, comes under the domain of options. Okay. Now, a share means, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, if you own a share in a company, uh, that means that you know uh, you actually have ownership of a part of the company uh, while options as the word option means is that it's a contract which tells you that you have the option to buy a share at a particular price that's that's all that an option is okay. an option is generally uh, just a piece of uh, you know uh, email or something which has a signature of uh, one of the uh, board members of the company and that's it uh, shares are actually you know numbered so you know in india generally when you go and register a company you you usually register it with uh, you know uh, around uh, 10000 uh, shares uh, okay and with uh, 1 lakh uh, you know something which we call paid up capital okay so one lakh paid up capital means we just have to show uh, to the uh, registrar of companies that our uh, company has got one lakh capital in the bank. Uh, so that's the value of our company and uh, 10,000 shares. So which means that every share is worth 10 rupees. Okay. Now you could change these numbers. Uh, you could make, uh, you could have one lakh shares and uh, one lakh paid up capital, which means every share would be worth one rupee. Okay. Uh, it depends like some companies register with one rupee shares and some companies do register with uh, 10 rupee shares uh, in the US as well. Like mostly companies register with uh, $1 shares or with half a dollar shares. It, it really uh, it depends. Now, uh, what happens is like every share has got a couple of prices uh, in it. Okay. So when you have like a share, it has got uh, something which is called the unit price okay it has got something which is called the uh, you know fair market value and uh, when you create an option of this share okay so you can create one option for each share okay so whenever you create an option for that share that is going to have something called a strike price 
So what are these values? Now, this unit price is uh, basically uh, defined uh, by, uh, you know, your paid up capital divided by, you know, total number of shares. So if your company has uh, 10,000 shares and your paid up capital is 1 lakh, you just uh, divide that and your unit price is 10. Okay. Now, this unit price is uh, not, uh, the unit price usually uh, does not uh, change uh, during the company's uh, existence. If the company issues new shares, their unit price is going to be same as existing unit shares. What is the fair market value? So the fair market value is uh, basically, you know, when some new, uh, uh, new investor invests into your company. So they, they might purchase uh, 10 of your shares for 200 rupees instead of 100 rupees. So now your fair market value is 20 rupees per share rather than being 10 rupees per share. Okay. So uh, generally like uh, what, what the government thinks is that if uh, the last transaction of shares of your company was done at X rupees per share, then that is the fair market value. So even if one share was bought or sold for, uh, you know, X rupees per share, then your entire company's shares, all of them are, uh, val are valued at X rupees per share. Okay. Now, uh, what happens is that if you are given shares, so if you're given eight shares, right, uh, and you know, each of them is worth 93,000 now. So that's basically the fair market value. But maybe the originally the shares were worth, uh, you know, 100 rupees each. Okay. So uh, if the company, you know, grants you actual shares, so what they would do is uh, they uh, would, you know, uh, allocate these shares to you and you would have to pay uh, 93,000. Uh, minus 100 rupees for each share that's uh, gonna be you know 92,900 uh, uh, rupees into eight shares so that's uh, in the eyes of the government uh, that's the amount of money that you have just uh, you know uh, earned okay because the shares are worth 93,000 but uh, you know uh, the cost of those shares uh, getting them would have been 100 rupees so uh, basically, you know, you have just became an owner of uh, 93,000 uh, rupees. So you have to pay that, uh, you have to pay tax on this. So you, whatever is your tax bracket, it's 20%, 30%, you have to pay tax on this to the government if you get the equity. Now, what happens is like if, if a company has never uh, received any funding yet, uh, they can give equities to you because uh, in that case the unit value and the fair market value are exactly the same because nobody has actually invested in that uh, company yet so the shares are worth the unit value itself uh, this happens with like really really early stage employees uh, or generally it happens only with the founders so uh, if it happens uh, with somebody who has joined at the co-founder level or something like that before even the first uh, first round of funding has ever happened Okay. So this is something that's not really worth discussing a lot because not a lot of times you are, uh, you know, discussing offers of that level where you are uh, given an offer to join a company as like the third person or the fourth person inside that company. In that case, you know, uh, you might, your offer might contain equity instead of ESOPs and like a lot of people at uh, coding blocks who joined like at the really really early stage they actually have got equity equity instead of eShops for example so they actually have got coding block shares in their name they own it uh, right uh, rather than having eShops now let's talking about eShops so what eShops are uh, eShops are an option to buy that share now why eShops are more preferable after you raise a round of funding is because you don't want to pay this tax you know you don't want to pay uh, this tax when uh, the shares are worth 93k and they are not uh, you know worth uh, 100 rupees anymore they are now worth 93k at that point you don't want to pay tax on 93k because uh, these shares you can't sell unless the company is listed publicly now if this comp company gets listed publicly like if it starts trading on new york stock exchange or bombay stock exchange or something like that in that case also you can get shares uh, in that case you know the companies give you something called rsus which is uh, you know which is basically shares but there are some restrictions as in you can't sell them immediately you have to wait six months before you can sell them stuff like that okay um but uh rsus also people prefer because you know they can be immediately sold on the market and you can actually make money out of it so people are okay to pay tax on that 
So sometimes RSUs have a six month limit. So once you get an RSU, you have you can't sell it within six months. So you wait for six months and after six months you sell it and after six months you sell it then whatever money you make out of it you pay your taxes in that financial year and that's that's all fine uh, right or you can hold on to that share and still pay the tax because uh, that's also fine because if you just got money because shares are like money as long as they are traded openly on the market but uh, you know if a company is privately held they they are not traded on the market in that case people prefer uh, ESOPs. Now, what is an ESOP? An ESOP actually is a contract. Uh, so, you know, you get like, uh, you know, an ESOP of eight shares. Uh, it means that, you know, you have the option to purchase eight, eight shares at the strike price. Okay. So let's say uh, you have been given a strike price of rupees one. So generally, most companies give you a strike price of rupees one because you need to have like a symbolic price. So uh, if a company grants you ESOPs and then they say the strike price is 1 lakh rupees, then they're just saying that you know you have to pay 1 lakh per share to buy them, which does not make any sense, right? So companies generally put a strike price of rupees 1 and uh, so you get 8 options, okay? Now at any future date, after these 8 options have vested, like if you spend 4 years, all the 8 options are yours now. If you want to, uh, you know, uh, buy 4 shares of that company, you can pay only four rupees and four of your options will get actually converted into shares okay but the moment it an option gets converted into a share then you have to pay tax for that uh, share okay uh, because now the government knows that you know you have actually earned money right so nobody usually uh, converts or exercises their esops unless the company goes public because if you exercise an esop then uh, you you own uh, like uh, virtual imaginary paper money uh, but you have to pay real tax on it so that kind of does not uh, make sense so esops make sense only if uh, you know you get uh, your esops vested and after that the company actually does uh, go public so esops will not make a lot of sense if your esops have a staggered uh, vesting schedule in case uh, in the, at the end of the first year you get only 5 or 10% of the esops second year you got 20 percent like that if it's a graded schedule then at the end of the first year of your job you might not have any whole number esops in your name at all if you don't have them then uh, you know uh, when you leave the company after one year you don't have uh, the option to buy any shares okay and secondly uh, even after spending say four years of the company if all of your esops have gotten converted to you if the company does not actually ipo or if the company does not get acquired then uh, you can't actually even sell uh, your ESOPs. So both these things need to happen uh, for ESOPs uh, to make sense. Um, so I, I hope, uh, I think uh, many of your questions have gotten answered in this about uh, ESOPs and vesting period and RSUs and stocks and options and everything. Uh, there are a lot of other things also uh, to consider here, like, you know, uh, what are uh, preferential shares? For example, when a company gets acquired, uh, it can happen that everybody who had ESOPs, they end up with having zero money if, if a company gets acquired, not if a company gets IPO'd, okay? So if a company gets acquired, sometimes what happens is like the investors uh, have got preferential shares, like their shares can be uncashed before your shares can be uncashed, like the employee shares, okay? So it could happen like, you know, they have got liquidation preferences. So uh, the investors actually make most of the money first. The founders make the money next. And after that, if there is really any money left, then the employees are making that money. But a lot of times during acquisitions, the employees don't make a lot of money. But if a company goes public, then uh, everybody does make uh, a lot of money. But uh, yeah, I mean, those things are something that we can uh, maybe get into later or you guys can, you know, just Google it out and uh, read about them. Uh, right. But uh, yeah, I think uh, thank you for watching. Hope that solves your questions. If you have anything else, you know, you want to ask about. Uh, salaries and packages and ESOPs and all, please feel free to, you know, uh, just uh, write uh, comments for that. I would uh, love to reply to those comments. And if there are some very specific questions, I can make another video uh, on that. Okay. So yeah, stay home, stay safe and uh, have a good day.